What is up guys? Back again. Vlog number two here and in today's video we are going to talk a little bit about chest training. We're going to touch on a little bit about caffeine too. So if you have any questions guys you know where to put them right down there in the comment section. So without further ado let's go. saw there guys just went through a little bit of chest training and as you saw as well and um, I got a monster energy drink before I trained now I actually had about half an hour in the between time between when I bought that and then when I actually trained okay because caffeine does take a little bit of time to actually build up in the system you have to die digest it and assimilate it into your body so necking that can straight away isn't going to bring your blood caffeine levels up to where you want them you know so that's a common mistake we see all the time people going oh i know that caffeine is good for training it's an ergogenic age and um, but they take it at the wrong time so unless you're actually timing your caffeine intake to be roughly 90 to maybe 30 minutes before your training then you're kind of not getting the full benefit of it, you know? So your blood caffeine levels are kind of peaking later on in your session, which isn't bad per se, but you're just not getting the full benefit. And caffeine is actually a really interesting molecule, and it's very similar to the adenosine molecule, which you may know is in adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, which is what we use for energy. You know, so that's where its effect comes from. It's very similar in structure to that molecule, the adenosine molecule. So it binds to the same receptor. So caffeine itself doesn't actually give you energy, more so it makes you feel less fatigued, okay? So it may mask an energy deficit. And 
It also does a lot of interesting things in terms of cyclic AMP, cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Um, and that, the cyclic AMP is kind of a master regulator, or one of the master regulators of energy availability in the cell and it gets all these other gene transcription things going on. And um, it's a really interesting molecule, covered it on Snapchat the other day. Does a lot of interesting things in terms of upregulating certain processes and downregulating other processes. One of the ones it upregulates is fat oxidation, and that's actually true downregulating uh, the biosynthesis of fatty acids. So you produce, you make less fatty acids, your body has to liberate more fatty acids from actual fat stores, and as a result, it kind of oxidizes more free fatty acids. On top of that, it kind of prolongs the activity in the body of catecholamines, like adrenaline being the main one, you know? So that's where you get a kind of ergogenic benefit from it. You kind of feel a little bit more hyped up. Um, so it's really good for that, especially pre-training. But again, super high levels of adrenaline just throughout your whole day probably isn't great. So I wouldn't be just necking cans of Monster unless you were planning on training or perhaps if you had something like you were studying for a prolonged period of time and you just needed something to kind of wake you up a little bit more. You know, caffeine can be really beneficial for that. It does a huge amount in the body. We're probably gonna write an article on it soon enough. And I wrote an article the other day on acetyl L-carnitine and how that interacts with caffeine and you can get a thing called fatty acid dumping going on. So if you're interested in learning a bit more about that, link is below. But yeah, I'll probably do a more in-depth one on or a video on caffeine another time. But what we want to talk about today is chest training. So you saw, first of all, I started off with an incline bench. And with that, I'm doing a very wide grip and I'm going for almost like a guillotine press and um, aiming to come down towards the upper chest. And you see a lot of people, I'm going to say propagating the myth that you have to touch your chest with uh, the bench press, okay? So if you've seen our video on what is active range, you'll know why I'm not touching my chest on that, okay? So I just don't have the mobility to get there. When I bring my arm back like that, past that level, I'm turning all that tension, or I'm putting all that tension on different structures other than my chest, which is where I want to have it. If I'm training chest, why am I putting more tension on, say my bicep tendon and my anterior delt than I need to? And with that first exercise, what I'm doing is I'm going for a heavy weight. So my first exercise in all my sessions after warming up is, I'm not gonna say it's a max effort, but it's a max effort. I'm going to try beat my reps or sets every single week or every time I come into the gym to hit that same exercise, I'm aiming to perform that exercise better. And that could be true reps, could get an extra rep here or an extra set at the same weight, or I could make that exercise look prettier. If I found my technique, the last day was a little bit shoddy, maybe I was losing a bit of positioning or a little bit of tension, wasn't hitting the correct depth that I feel is right for me, then the next time I come in, I may attempt that same weight, but try to make it look prettier. Try to adhere to a bit more strict tempo and kind of make it look to someone else objectively. They think that is a good exercise. I have sufficiently put tension where I want. Then we moved on to that plate loaded chest press. And I actually really like that plate loaded chest press because it allows me to get into a nice position where I can shorten that pec, okay? And what I'm thinking of when I'm doing that is not so much just pushing the weight away from me or even pushing myself into the back pad, which are both great cues. What I'm actually thinking of is sending those elbows in as close to each other. So if you think of it, your pec, all it does is move this bone here, okay? So that's all we're thinking of doing. We're just thinking of moving that bone, nothing else. So what I'm using as a gauge is that art or the elbow pit, and I'm just kind of sending that in. Now I'm not getting full lockout, I'm actually trying to keep just a little bit shy of that and really feel the pecs working while I do that. With that as well, I was going for a very strict tempo, roughly kind of two to three seconds on the 
eccentric, the lowering of it, and then roughly a kind of half a second, one second pause in the bottom position, and then a control tempo up. Okay, so really what I'm looking for with that exercise is to kind of pump up the pecs, get a lot of blood flow to that area after I've already hit my more strength focused work. After that, I was really pumped through the chest, and then we moved on to a low incline fly, okay? So again, if you look at your individual sternum angle, you can see here with mine, like some people have a very flat or shallow sternum angle where they get a lot from regular flat bench pressing. They get full activation of their pecs. But if you look at me, when I do a flat bench press, I'm only getting tension through here where I want to get tension through the whole pec. The low incline allows me to get more tension kind of through the pec than the lower incline or a no incline or flat bench would. And a lot of people argue about different exercises being functional or unfunctional. And dumbbell flies is one of them. People are like, oh, the, the bench press is functional. Uh, dumbbell flies are more of an isolation exercise. They're just an unfunctional exercise. Like muscles lengthen and muscles shorten. That's all they do. Anything that accomplishes that is a functional exercise. Yes, some exercises may be, or may be more efficient for that goal than others. Some, may, some exercises may be more specific to what you're training for. But it's hard to tell someone who is in an arm bar in this position here that being able or being strong at that fly motion isn't gonna be beneficial. So all of a sudden, if you're an MMA, practitioner or a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioner, dumbbell flies become a functional exercise, you know? So don't be thinking in that kind of black or white functional exercises, unfunctional exercises. Everything possibly has its place. You just have to understand why you're doing certain exercises and what the end goal actually is. And then we move on to those cable flies. And again, what I'm looking to do here with those is really shorten the pec. The cables allow that kind of nice uh, tension uh, throughout the whole movement. And what I'm really trying to do with those is send those elbows as close together as possible while keeping tension on the chest. That really kind of gets the inner chest working, which a lot of guys want to develop. That's it from me guys. Um, again, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. And if you like the video, click like for the video.